Our responsorial psalm today says, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. It includes a description of the king's son. Who is he? He will rule the nations with justice. All people will recognize and accept him as the great king over all the earth, not only Israel. He will lift up and save the poor and the downtrodden. And then in our second reading from the letter to the Ephesians, we hear that the Gentiles, all of us who are not of Jewish heritage, are now co-heirs, members of the same body of Christ with the apostles and all of the early believers who had accepted Jesus as their Messiah, their Savior. We are partners in the promises of the gospel because of our faith in Jesus, the Christ, not because of our heritage or our own background. In today's gospel from Matthew, we read that the Messiah, the Savior, will be the heir of King David, born in David's hometown of Bethlehem. Remember in the gospel story, uh, when the King Herod asked, where is this Messiah to be born? And they say, in Bethlehem of Judah, because it's David's birthplace. When Herod hears this, he really doesn't want to worship the Christ child at all. He wants him done away with because he sees the Savior, the newborn Savior, as a threat to his power. He sees it as a, a, a threat to his desire to just get along, to just be comfortable, to maintain things the way they are. Why? Well, you see, King Herod wasn't really a very good king at all, boys and girls. He just wanted to keep power for himself. And he, he made an arrangement with the Romans who had conquered the, the Jewish people. And the, the arrangement he made was going to keep him in power, was going to keep him comfortable and, and not challenged by anybody. And he saw this newborn savior of the Jewish people as somebody who could threaten his very comfortable position. How often do I make compromises in my life? How often do I compromise my values, the values of the gospel, the values of Jesus, to maintain my lifestyle, to keep everything comfortable, not only for me, but for everyone around me? Obviously, the Magi, the wise men, didn't care about this at all. They left the comfort of their royal courts and their own religious practices to come to follow the star, to seek the truth. And what truth is revealed today on the Feast of the Epiphany? It's the same truth that is true for the whole world. Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, is the Lord and Savior of all people. He has come to reveal the truth for us, a truth that will set us free if we accept him and live his way not our own way. You see, the truth is not about words or laws. The truth is about a person. God in the flesh. God who became one of us. Jesus the Christ. Yes, we live his teachings and we keep his commandments. But not because they're easy or comfortable or because they always make sense to us. No, we love them, we live them, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for us. There's no other reason. It's all about Jesus.